Hello and welcome to another episode of 420 Grams here on NewsClick. Uh, this is a show that we were supposed to record on the 1st of April, which some of us know as April Fool's Day. Uh, but when we sat down to sort of uh, script the show, we found that none of the spoofs we were coming up with could match the level of comic quality that the real life story of Indian football uh, is sort of unfolding before us. So instead, we decided to wait a couple of days and do a proper show where we hopefully can discuss some of uh, some of this story. Um, uh, my co-host Arjun Pandit had suggested that we start with a timeline setting up a context for this conversation and the story of Indian football where it stands today with two leagues, clubs fighting with each other, open rebellion in a way against the All India Football Federation. Uh, but it's a long story and the timeline is extremely complicated and our graphics team is still a work in progress. So, uh, <laughs> so instead I'll start with the date, uh, December 9th, 2010. That was the date when we all received a press release saying that the All India Football Federation had signed on a joint venture between IMG, which is a global sports marketing giant, and uh, Reliance India Limited, which is a company owned by Mukesh Ambani. Uh, the deal was the AIFF signing this joint venture, then known as IMG Reliance, as their commercial partners with the goal of, and these are their words, not mine, maximizing the sporting and commercial potential of football in India from grassroots to the professional level. As stated on day one, they have set up a new league and they've done all kinds of things in terms of, it's literally like they've said, huh? that it will look at scheduling, restructuring and reformatting of domestic competitions. In addition, Reliance, IMG Reliance plans to develop, operate and administer a new professional football league in the country. So, as, as far as this press release goes from uh, almost nine years ago now, things are going exactly according to plan. But what is the result on the existing structure of Indian football, the existing Indian football fans, the clubs that have been around for a hundred years plus? To talk about this, we have Arjun Pandit, who's a regular on the show, co-host, yep. co-founder, etc., etc. And very happy to have finally with us uh, Sharda Ugra from Bangalore. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. So I'm going to. This football show is very, very exciting for me. <laughs> yeah, we're glad to have you because uh, it's hard to find sane voices that are also happy to talk about some of these things in in the current media environment that we're in. Uh, so I'll hand over to you guys because my mind boggles. See, see, as things stand right now, so what's happening is to cut a long story short, it's a case of haves and have-nots. ठीक है haves ho gaye aapke isl who are supposedly and who are enjoying the publicity and who are enjoying you know the bulk of uh, if i may say investment and everything that's coming and that is all that is good for football while the have nots are the i league clubs in the i league right now who are saying look we deserve the same kind of treatment so because they feel they're not being given the same kind of treatment they had requested because fearing that in the next couple of years that they will become non-existent, mm. they had requested a meeting with the president of the All India Football Federation, Mr. Praful Patel, saying that come, here are grievances out, mm. right? As a result... So what are the sort of grievances? They're not happy with the way the structure is right now, yeah? They're so not happy being of, second fiddle right now, yeah, in, so in their own words. Scheduling, time. Yeah, all those things. I mean, yeah. grievances being that, look, you're making us play in the afternoon, you're making ISL teams play in the evening, so on and so forth. Weekend, There's no relegation, promotion, our league jeetta hai, wo kaha jata hai, uske baad hota kya hai. Hmm. You guys don't have any relegation, promotion going on, and so many other things. Hmm. But then, what happened is that no one from the AIFF got back to them immediately. As a result, they said, because they had formed an association of all those clubs, they said, we will not play in the Super Cup, because that in their in their mind was the best way to get the AIFS attention and to get everyone talking about this topic and, and a subject in which you have to give credit to all these I-League teams they have invested in. Invested in, in a sport where the money not come back. So you have to give double the respect over there. Now the point is, the AIFF finally said, look, we will get Mr. Patel to talk to you on the 14th of this month or the 15th of this month. Hmm. So, then the I-League teams have said, that being Minerva, there is I think Gokulam and there is Aizwal, because they had by then forfeited their matches and given walkovers to teams in the Super Cup. They have said, okay, fine, then you reschedule our games because if you're giving us the meeting, we have no problem in playing the Super Cup. To which the AIF have said, 
नहीं होने वाला भाई साहब ऐसे होने ही नहीं वाला ऑलरेडी इतना लॉस करवा दिया आपने फर्स्ट यू प्ले देन एग्जैक्टली सो एज अ रिजल्ट सेवन और एट टीम्स फ्रॉम द आई लीग हैव पुल्ड आउट फ्रॉम द सुपर कप अ मीटिंग इज हैपनिंग ऑन द फोर्टींथ and the aff has also gone on to say that sanctions will be in place for all the teams that have given a walk over in the super cup yeah because that response is extremely quick if the internet doesn't work in in the stadium for 5 minutes <laughs> <laughs> there's an immediate fine of 25000 rupees that flies across the room <laughs> but but response is shada hoga uh, the the question i think is not so much the battle between leagues for primacy and for eyeballs because those are competitive battles that will continue Uh, it's i think one of maybe a level playing field and the fact that there are so many vested interests who are invested in the pro- promotion of one league over another which is leading to this conflict do, do you sort of agree yeah you know what looks what it looks like uh, for example just what arjun was saying this whole scenario in which it's played out that you know you're going to get fined for not playing because uh, you know you asked to meet us and we are, we, didn't, we didn't meet you it almost becomes like a blackmail situation that had they played there was that okay you played now we don't need to talk to you it's fine you you in the business, you know you you in the scheme of things so that's why uh, we are kind of here and uh, i think the whole thing that is being seen is that they are being seen as two different products if i can use that for in this word uh, that all old people of us we get all agitated when people say product they're looking at two different things and they're saying look this is you know that's the un unglamorous the unfancy side but those are community clubs that is where indian football has survived all these decades is 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 the community club and it and it you know everyone's talking about the really old calcutta clubs uh, as opposed to atk that's a classic situation which presented itself that whatever you do about all the smaller clubs what are you going to do to atk mohan bagan east bengal that problem is not going to go away because that's where a massive like thousands of people are fans in a way that they can you know sort of burn down things when they get angry and they won't let that issue be settled so quietly it's also a question of um, all the other issues about uh, scheduling and the kind of matches they are even the kind of presentation on television you just see what if you have a really good quality um, match uh, shown on hd and if you have an and an i league game and you're just crying and i league is played in some spectacular venues you know and it, it, you don't get good quality coverage on it and what and so, i'm sorry to all the people that are isl champions but the greatest stories in indian football for the past say 5 6 years have come from i league you know from the league that nobody pays attention front page news when isol fc won across the, the greatest you know. story to come out of the isl was an i league club going up to the isl and winning it but but <laughs> here here here's my point here is where i differ with you guys i see you know jab hum log sab i league wali ke baat kar rahe hain and agreed the big stories are coming from the isol is winning a minerva is winning or say what a real kashmir is done chennai city fc is done but up in stories ko agar side pe rakho and you look at the development of indian football i don't think you can say that the isl is not aided in developing indian football and moving it up the ladder much more than what the i league in say 10 years before that had done bhai humne cover kiya i league usse pehle kahan ja rahi thi gaadi yaar kahin nahi ja rahi thi gaadi is 2010 wale press release mein z telefilms limited i was working for z at that time yeah <laughs> you know the thing also is that the amount of money that was pumped into the game because of the idea isl you say okay you need the isl to be there to be this uh, telegenic sort of thing that you can show had you given that much interest to the uh, uh, or money it's not that there's no money in indian sport anymore there is had you given that kind of interest and you know it's the same two company at the same company that's running both these league but literally it's like you know one is the poor cousin and one is the person sitting on the throne that kind of a uh, approach that is there it's also a question of approach and okay you understand that the i league clubs can't bring you the big stars because they don't have the funds but you have to find ways to kind of include them into the ecosystem i think bfc for example is the best example of how you took you created this club out of nothing nothing there was nothing here you know you had hal and iti like a, a culture in bangalore but there's no uh, a proper club here they created it out of nothing you know they created a modern club of course they needed a huge amount of money to do it but they did it and it's possible that if you put r- mon- the right amount of money the right intention things can change in in uh, in um, the rest of it i'm just wondering that the money is great what is the intention with the rest of indian football bfc sort of uh, earned its stripes and whatever the phrases i i forgotten uh, by by winning the i league going to the isl winning the isl and making two finals you know 
what are you trying to but but, what but you Shardha, would, would you agree with the fact that my point is see if you look at one single franchise in the ISL and you look back at the five years up kesak to mota mota each franchise has put in about 80 to 100 crore in these five years right now and if that includes your franchise fees that you're paying to FSDL that includes the amount of money you're spending on players so in in about 100 crore, so that means about 600 to 700 crore has been put in by a franchise. Prior to that, you had an I-League where you had a Salgaukar, you had huge stories, you know, you had Salgaukar, Dempo, you had the Calcutta clubs. But the point is that product was just not working. I mean, I think we should agree with that. Yeah, no, I, think I, like I, I have to disagree with that. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, Shada. One second. Because the the I League was on a definite upswing because other everyone realizes that things have to change that India has to assimilate with the global football economy and become a part of larger stories than just what's happening domestically. Like Calcutta League, we had to go ahead. The biggest stories in I-League have come since the ISL. The biggest stories in I-League in the last five years have come since the ISL. So, no one is... So I think it's because of them though. No, it's not because of them. I agree, it's not because of them. I agree. Around it. Yeah, it's around it. Of footballness that is but there. But my point is, before those five years, where were those stories? So, if you're saying I want to make an investment of say about 700 crore over the next five years, why will I make an investment in a league which has been running for say 15, 20, 25, 30 years, which has been knocking on the door, but the door is not going down. Why won't I start something new? The thing is that the professionalization of football, which BFC was able to show you, I don't know BFC ka budgets and how much they spent in relation with the uh, ISL club. But that professionalization is what you needed to kick the door down in a, in a way. That darwaza jo aap keh na. That professionalization is what BFC uh, uh, bought. And maybe, uh, you know, I, I did a story on football in Assam and they said, we want to be like BFC. So they had said them, no one is saying we want to be like any of the ISL. We want to be like BFC. Because that's what they did. So that kind of that model of professionalism has come from, a, from, from an I-League club. You know, which came about it because, okay, they had a fight originally to start with the ISL and all the rest of it. So you understand that there has been a lack of professionalism in, in sort of club football at various sort of parts. Again, great stories. You can make movies on, on, on what used to happen. But you accept that. But now you say, okay, this is what the situation is. How can we make how can we make them to merge together and, and mesh? And just before I uh, finish, you know, when the Prime Minister was going to make his announcement uh, about the space thing, which we didn't know, we all waiting, waiting. One of my colleagues says, I know what his announcement is going to be. One nation, one league. <laughs> and only the football people got it. You know, like, huh? No, it definitely <laughs> is one nation, one league. And the the my big issue with your sort of logic of investing money, etc., etc., is I don't think there's anyone in the I-League system, the mm. smaller clubs as such, that is negating the amount of money that people have spent, that is negating the fact that Maybe a larger number of Indian football players are able to make a more decent wage. Yep. No one is negating all these facts. Even the fact that, okay, therefore, what it's worth, at least at the senior level, there are good training facilities, there are good coaches coming in, more coaches are getting educated. There are plenty of positives. But just because you have money, like this, uh, the fact that the AIFF basically singularly or single handedly decided to sell its entire house to a private company and outsource all decision making. Like there's no longer, we were talking earlier and and, and we, we were having this discussion that officially, at least all the decisions come from committees or members or the executive committee of the AIFF. But the fact is when you ask these guys and several AIFF officials have on the record said that the final decision, the final okay has to come from our commercial partners. So essentially you're saying all this committee structure, democratic structure, elections, all of this stuff is just done for show. When you are in this body, the decisions will be taken by our Maibap. Right? Which is, and the other common factor, which of if course... It, if, it's, if it's helping in the development of Indian football, if in the last five years I've seen the development of the Indian player gone from level A to level B or to level, you know, beyond that, then you have to give respect and you have to give credit to the ISL for bringing in the kind of coaches, for bringing in the kind of professionalism as Sharda was saying right now. 
given but who was going to do that before that no no, no so if you're coming in it. as a big stakeholder no you will put it. if you are a big stakeholder agar you say okay i want this and this in place if you want me to come in and make this kind of an investment hmm. i am not going to just come in and say here sir take this investment and do as you please with it i am going to get okay i want a b c and d in my favor and then we can take the ball we can get the ball moving in front sure agreed but does a b c d including include sabotaging your younger brother matlab <laughs> or whatever the junior member of this family also a b c d is fine that you want it up to a b c d e f g you want of course z q chahiye why are you taking control you know what's happened is that af is saying acha theek hai done it like everything be handled by these people because they have money no money is a part of football you know as in when india, if indian football has to grow money is definitely needed but money cannot grow over and above what are the parameters of how indian football should be developed how it should grow and it has it will come through community clubs you know because they are all over the country in small little pockets how do you work with them in, in that sort of mo, uh, you know module and create uh, an environment in which it becomes um, much more sort of democratic in a way yeah. everyone will say you know you're being idealistic money means no democracy shut up but the, you have to find a way to be, to take all this energy that is there in in which isl you can say okay isl has brought about this whole energy about let's football and all the rest of it you have to take that energy and make it work in many more ways other than only just holding big tournaments you know it has to be it, it, it has to be uh, spread out at your grassroots in a far deeper way than it has the and isl is bilkul upar ka and all that decision making or all that planning cannot be done by these private entities who yes. at the end of the day they are commercial entities they are commercial partners and they are clearly driven by a profit motive right so which is not what the definition of a national sports federation or the role of a national sports federation is the fact of the matter is that all these things fall under the larger purview of what is referred to as the olympic charter or or like the spirit of sport etc etc which of course uh, we and we contacted the asian football confederation for comment on what is going on in india and their response was uh, pretty much a straight up no comment uh, <laughs> i don't know you read into it what you like but essentially uh, their stand would be that uh, how domestic leagues and competitions are governed is a matter for the respective member association to deal with so it's if we think that there is some larger body that's going to step in and sort this out it's it's not going to happen i mean can i can i put a little more context to it so yeah. basically last year someone from the afc had given a uh, a path of how indian football should progress because at that time of course last year this two league problem was happening so in that they had said that by the year 2022 23 you should be having a system whereas you have promotion and relegation so that means by 2022 23 aapke paas you should have a second division and a first division irrespective of what you call those divisions right so they had said that from 2019 to 2022 or 2018 to 2022 you will have one team that is a champion team of the i league coming up and one team that is in every alternate year that is coming in through a tender ki aapne tender nikala hai and saying through this franchise i am going to now put in this much amount of money and you know that way so that by 22 23 you can have the relegation promotion system but as the afc just replied to you right now in in you know they said no comment it it's pretty clear that that is just a suggestion yeah, yeah it, it is yeah, on the aiff if it wants to actually take that suggestion forward or not do anything with that suggestion so this entire thought process ki afc ko chalo ya fifa ko chalo is not going to happen because the same thing is happening in us football yeah. they haven't had relegation promotion since 1996 now the lower level teams are writing to fifa saying do something about it but fifa still date has not done anything about it and the us main league has now gone from to a 24 team league to now they're trying to make it into a 28 team league with people coming in who can guarantee a certain amount of money and investment to grow the team and to grow the players with it okay so since you said this uh, and you all are both i mean shada you of course have covered cricket for a uh, very long time uh, how much of this is the result of us basically trying to blindly transplant what we perceived as the success of the IPL into football i think a, a lot of it has to do with uh, with that the owners of the uh, of the ISL own a team in in the IPL a single team and it became like you know why can't we control the entire thing you know what fun uh, and 
so it's that kind of but but the two entities the two sports are, are have run so differently that um, both in terms of how their ruling bodies have operated you know how they have uh, worked towards building the game at the at the grassroots um, and as well as uh, the response of the public to those sports Th- those have been so different that's why the result of what's happened in the isl is what you see now that it's it's a reflection of what was happening in indian football before the isl was even there that you've put in this thing upar se you put in this great product and it a great you you think it's done uh, as arjun is saying uh, it's 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 had its benefits for uh, football if you speak to players look that you know for for, for me to be playing against miku for uh, a, a goalkeeper to even be practicing against miku means his game improved considerably than if he was playing uh, he was practicing against a uh, um you know just a, a striker who comes from uh, from africa or some place yeah. yeah 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 you know so you can understand that but the rest of it the, the bcci's ecosystem wasn't placed when the ipl took place you know it wasn't supplanted later on it wasn't like tagged on later that that uh, the bcci hosts 2000 matches in a year how many matches does the iiff conduct of football do they know what those numbers are there was a point at which we said you know the bcci doesn't even know i don't know they still know how many people play football are they their players have only just got registered this is all mind you this is much newer than you think if you're looking at it you'll say say about it's about from the 2000s mid 90s it's it, it has started so that other ecosystem was already there and therefore it started feeding in all these players into ipl that you've got all these uh, and the new leagues have spun out and karnataka league and tamil nadu league and all that so it's the rest of that ecosystem which has massive gaps in it in india whichever way you want to um operated if you want to have a national league and these uh, and smaller state leagues or city leagues you have to work it out there has to be a structured calendar to how you are going to progress in indian football it's a bit random i'm just looking at it from the outside it's a bit random you don't know how it's going to go the whole thing about why is rahul beke not in the indian team and all that became like a big um a sort of thing that in cricket you won't have that happening because there is this proper ladder that is there that from this ladder you go all the way up uh, sort of logically and you know when when the minerva boys made it into the under 17 that was a reflection of what community football can do whatever mr rajiv bajaj's personality uh, churns out from time to time that's different but it's that kind of there has to be a structure to it there has to be a ladder that's in place and this is one of the biggest flaws in indian sport that many sports football those much better compared to if you go down the ranks and look at other sports there's no ladder people don't know where to go there's no events to take part in you know so you need to have those national level events and which cricket had that structure that's why the ipl was able to you know move on and succeed and you brought up uh, ranjit bajaj of minerva punjab and he he did a lengthy interview uh, to another outlet super power football uh, recently where one of the things he is talking about is the sort of plan that uh, this alternative association of i league clubs has pro- either proposed or created 16 but, team league i think but or 20 team league yeah what uh, let's not get into the numbers but what he essentially was saying was if the commitment has been made to these uh, founding franchises of the ISL that there will be no relegation promotion for them we are even okay playing a unified league where only i only other cl- non outside these 10 12 entities everyone else is subjected to relegation but promotion i hate to say it but ghuma phira ke gaadi aapke paise pe rukti hai nahi nahi aapki gaadi paise pe ruk rahi hai but ye inka sta- stance ye hai ki main saste mein kar sakta hu आप मुझे खिलाओ तो सही तब मैं दिखाऊंगा आपको कितना कंपेटिटिव हूं या नहीं टेक आउट द इयरली फ्रेंचाइज फी व्हिच आई गिव टू द एसोसिएशन मेक इट पुट इट डाउन टू टू नॉट टू द एसोसिएशन बाबा यू डोंट यू डोंट गिव द नो नो टू एफएसडीएल टू रन द लीग सो ही इज सेइंग कि दैट 8 टू 10 करोड़ दैट दीस टीम्स हैव बीन गिविंग फॉर द लास्ट 5 इयर्स ब्रिंग इट डाउन टू 2 करोड़ सो पीपल लाइक अस कैन इवन कम इन एंड प्ले इन दैट लीग नाउ द पॉइंट इज यू टेक द अदर 8 फ्रेंचाइजेस who have already put 10 crore so 50 crores over the last 5 years they've been guaranteed that for the next 10 years you will not be no relegation promotion fine but they'll say what is this yaar why have we given I, 50 crore so and I now have, you're suddenly letting someone else come in for just 2 crore i have two answers to this one uh like having still continuing with the 5 year more period of no relegation promotion is kind of a parachute hmm. that says okay thank you for your initial inv- investment you get this in return yeah. secondly you have millionaires on one side which is i guys who are running i league clubs and billionaires on the other side who are running isl clubs surely billionaires can suck it up and spend another couple of 100 crores yeah 
that much you should be able if should, football clubs is the only way that. these guys are trying to make money then i'm sorry someone in their financial advisory team should come and say boss ye proposition galat hai football okay. clubs do not make money which is why i am saying ki you can we can do as many shows we can do as many protests as possible nothing is going to change till the first 10 years of the isl are not completed once the first 10 years are completed then you can think of a single league usse pehle don't think about it also this is my mera sochna ye in that time the smaller clubs have to survive basically correct and now you're thinking that uh, you're talking about the isl siddharth that uh, about the i league uh, now you've got these you've got these eight teams in uh, isl eight or 10 eight hai na eight eight right ha huh? so you've got eight teams i'm not sure eight, eight <laughs> or 10 <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, yeah well, <laughs> no 10 no, 10 and each of them have say a roster about 30 players ha huh? so three so you have 240 players playing uh, taking part in the most uh, professional uh, the most seen and the most visibly uh, uh, visible indian football league in the world but is that only the 240 players that are going to have a chance to make it at the top level what about the other like hundreds and thousands of kids that are playing they should have some way to play you know which i talk about the structure they should have some way to play and where they will be seen why can't the television uh, production quality be as as close as possible to be as okay you, you don't you like, you don't want to spend money on it at least allow that other league to find its own commercial partners to develop its own television let let them go i mean if the only sort of democratic TV space ha huh? if the only de- democratic space that still exists is the internet let them go digital let them find see, some I, I <laughs> See, ghuma fir aake. I don't know why. See, everyone is making a hue and cry about I League has been given this step child type of treatment right, right. prior to the ISL. Now I have covered the I League for a long time prior to the ISL as well. Matches were still happening the pair ko. Matches were still happening. आपके पचास लोग एक स्टेडियम में एंड अ बिग क्राउड कमिंग इन फॉर अ मोहन बगान ईस्ट बंगाल. So in that matches were still happening where television was only covering a handful of games. Yeah. Right. So what has changed? इसमें बदला क्या है? क्या बदला है? But Not should you not be better? Should you not want to improve because you you've shown by how good quality coverage what it makes television look like? You've yeah, but, shown. But then that shown, is Sharda. That is Indian football. Up, you can't accommodate it for so many teams, right? If you want the league to grow, how can you do it for say from a eight team league, ten team league, which gives you a certain number of matches in a year, and then you accommodate another ten or fifteen team league? It's possible, bhai. I'll tell. Abhi to bola how you can do it. Ha. Huh. Throw it off your your large sports network and give it to somebody else. See the bad thing because you have a difficult thing. You have so much money already spent. I I P L. If you are spending I P L on 16,000, 17,000, 50,000 crore, then what will remain for the rest of the sports? It will be very little. In that case, you will choose to pick and choose. Hockey will no longer be on any national network. Uh, in any case, God knows who was watching hockey, but. that's a separate story but so so many of these things like the the point is i think for me is that this desperate uh desire to control everything cannot be the way in which we should be allowing as as fans of indian football the all india football federation to function fsdl is a private company what they do should be governed by the laws of private the companies act or whatever it is that governs them fine and they should pursue their motives and their sort of objectives to whatever the fullest uh, satisfaction of their shareholders but as shareholders in the all india football federation we should be making certain demands and it's really remarkable to see finally that these relatively small fish have managed to band together and stand up against what is probably the largest corporate entity in this country today it is outrageous to me that the head of the aiff was seen getting some executive council post at fifa when your own clubs are saying sir we want to see you we have written two letters please can we meet you are they are you are they are your shareholders they are your partners they are not your like slaves you know you, they can't be given this kind of treatment It, it just it's completely outrageous that he doesn't have time he's he's campaigning this is why they say politicians should be in places where you are going to campaign for elections when your clubs are fighting it's a that's your the clubs are the bread and butter of your of your sport however ordinary and mamuli and low uh, revenue clubs they are they are they asking you for an audience and you won't give it who are you 
ठीक है If for that you're saying दस साल from your entire history, I am taking out टेन years for this infighting and this confusion is going on. But because of that, in the next फिफ्टी years we're going to reach another level. I am game with it, भाई I have no problem with it. I know I'm not putting in the money, so it's easy for me to say it right now. I'm not putting in money like a Minerva, or I'm not putting in money like a Real Kashmir or something. So it's easy for me to say it. But I'm saying in the larger scheme of things. If I feel that my team is going to go, or my the, the the structure of Indian football is going to go to a better place, and for that I have to say give away ten years, ten years of infighting and confusion of who's playing who or which is the top league, then TK, I I I have no no problem with that. See, that's a sound thing that you're saying. What you're saying is a sound thing that actually TK, you can have this. Come. But at the same time, it's important for this churning to be there and for smaller voices to be saying, "Hum bhi hai, hum bhi hai, hum bhi hai." Listen to us, listen to us, listen to us. It is important for there to be enough noise and for there to be a response to that noise, because that is your base from where your your players are going to come. You know, I'm not an expert in Indian football. I've just started covering for this thing, but I I find the 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 unequalness of it is really baffling to me because of the fact that there are many great things, but because of the fact that there is this. How can your own own ruling body treat the sport like this? You know. So what you are saying is, is Siddhartha Singh is correct that that um, uh, you can't submit everything to one financial private financial partner. Business is business, fine, great, but football doesn't have to be everything about about business and money. It's about whatever development and all the other things that are there that that come along with it. The unfashionable, unprofitable things that come along with develop with development and football. pretty uh, solid note on which to i think wrap up this conversation otherwise we'd go on forever and ever uh, any final points or anything you'd like to say to conclude or are we nothing kind of i had no idea this is going to be a tag team against me but uh, <laughs> it was a good good conversation nonetheless <laughs> i think you had an inkling <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, like at the point when uh, you were talking about uh, accepting roles in FIFA and also accepting uh, sort of the rights to host uh, the forthcoming FIFA uh, Under-17 Women's Championship, which is a fantastic thing. I think it's like really laudable that India is willing to put its taxpayers' money behind uh, promoting <laughs> uh, women's football or girls' football, as in this case, as it is. But doing it in this environment where you know we should insert that in nobody uh, in nobody got time for that <laughs> lady into it because you you you're on the one hand just pushing these people aside and it's like it's nowadays it's called brazening it out i think it's just what we used to have said all along it's just being ostriches and hoping ki yaar chala jayega upar se stick your head in the sand and hope for the best but yeah i mean uh, i don't know how to conclude this sorry That no. thought didn't go anywhere. <laughs> no, no, but I agree, man. I mean, uh, I have nothing more to add. I've said whatever I had to say. I, I still uh, stick to my guns, saying that look, I agree with where both of you are coming from. The fact that you can't ignore the smaller stakeholders, and to that, I feel they're not being ignored. Why? Because before the ISL came out, it was the same kind of league. There was nothing different about it. There is no no change about it. It's not like you know, prior to the I ISL, you had night. नहीं अपनापन था बट मैं कह रहा हूँ फेडरेशन पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू कुछ बदला नहीं है इन द वे यू यू आर प्लेइंग द लीग नाउ यू जस्ट सेइंग ओ नाउ यू हैव अनदर लीग व्हिच इज प्लेइंग इन द इवनिंग देन व्हाई यू नॉट सेंडिंग अस देयर तो अगर 10 साल में तो आई गेस लेट्स कंक्लूड ऑन दिस नोट कि आप आप जिस भी सॉर्ट ऑफ ब्रांच ऑफ मैनेजमेंट में हो वेदर यू आर रनिंग अ कंपनी और यू आर रनिंग अ फेडरेशन और यू आर रनिंग अ कंस्टिट्यूएंसी इफ यू कैन नॉट गेट रीइलेक्टेड बाय नो बाय डेमोक्रेटिक मींस Uh, if there is no change over a eight year or ten year period, if things are still the same, then maybe it's time for a change of leadership. 
and we'll leave it at that. And maybe I'll see you next week. Maybe we'll see you in 10 years' time when everyone has changed. Thank you. <laughs> thanks for coming. Thank you so much for that. Well, thanks a lot. Thanks so much for listening to me rambling. And uh, had a great time. Thank you very much. Can I can I have the final word? Absolutely. Let's football. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot the hashtag. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next week.